Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. Last one in the month of January for 2024. We are going to take a look at something we don't typically do on this company, a Canadian company, uh, Canadian Apartment Properties REITs. And when I say a Canadian company, it's not available on a New York Stock Exchange. This is available on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And this was a suggestion from Goyago. NYC, I'm, a, I'm, I'm probably butchering your name, but I'm assuming that's your name and then you live in New York City, question mark. Let me know in the comment section down below. Hello again, my friend. Great videos this week. Hey, appreciate that. Could you cover Canadian Apartments REIT on a future video? Yes, Canadian Apartment Properties REIT. That is what we'll take a look at today. Let's jump into the video. And if you are new to the channel or just have not done so, if you find any value in the content down below, hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hopefully you are on your own journey to financial freedom already. And ring that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. All of those things really help out a small YouTube channel like me with the YouTube algorithms, as well as watch, watching the video all the way to the end and dropping a comment and sharing with anyone you think that might find value. Well, I appreciate you doing that. Again, it's free. It really does help me out. Thank you so much. This is the best in interest stock screener. This is how I look at a company on a high level. We're going to use this to look at this company. Some of these are not, I will just preface this. Some of these are not available because it is a Canadian company on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Some information just is not available through the sites that I look at. The sites that I look at really are focused on American companies, but we're going to run through it in the same manner. And the ones that we weren't able to pull data on, we're just going to skip over and go on down the road. We want to understand the business. We will look at that growing free cash flow over the last five years. We'll look there growing dividend as well. Dividend payout ratio of 75% or less. This is not going to apply because it is a REIT. So don't really care about that one. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory. We will do that. Buy below current cost basis. It is not in my portfolio. It is not one that I'm looking for, but if I was, I would try to get it within a 52 week low, you know, 15% of a 52 week low or lower or closer to its 52 week low, basically. Return on invested capital and return on equity. Now, really for REITs, funds from operations is a good one to add in. But again, we're going to use the same criteria I always look at and earnings per share growth equal to or greater than the industry or 5% or, or better. And I like 10% or better for return on equity and return on invested capital. For companies like banks, I throw in price to book. One being fair value, anything under one being overvalued, anything under one being undervalued. Must meet five of eight or six of nine if it's a financial company. Let's jump in, back into the video now. One simple thing inspires us. So again, if you want to know more about this company, check them out, www.capreit.ca. That's www.capreit.ca. That is their homepage where I pull this information from. One simple thing inspires us about all others care. It inspires us to reach higher, provide more, and perform better. Whether you're a resident, one of our employees, or an investor, care is our watchword, and you can see it in everything we do for over 25 years. So they've been around for 25 years. That sense of care and relentless commitment to quality has guided us in developing friendly, accessible, vibrant neighborhoods all across Canada, and that's basically what they do. They're buying uh, apartment buildings and renting them out. We're committed to our dynamic, close-knit communities made up of multi-unit residences, and we stop at nothing to make certain they enjoy a quality of living second to none. Our attention to every detail ensures that the continue, they continue to thrive, welcoming one and all with real warmth that makes each residence. We offer a highly sought after, safe and secure place to call home. I am not familiar with the Canadian market, but again, that is what they do. They are buying uh, apartment buildings, apartment complexes, and renting them out. I don't know if they lease them out to other owners or if they are owning them and doing the lease work themselves. You'd really wanna get in here and dig into the specifics of this company, but they are a REIT that specializes in apartment buildings in Canada. I don't even know what provinces uh, they, they service. Maybe it's all across Canada. We are talking about Canadian Apartment Properties Real Estate Investment Trust. And if you're interested in the ticker, it's C-A-R-U-N on the Toronto Stock Exchange, right? That is their ticker there. At least that's what they're telling me online. <laughs> And they were down 0.38% today, 18 cents, not a big drop. But again, this was one was suggested by a, a viewer. So I am going to go ahead and run through this. 52-week uh, range, as low as $40.52, as high as $54.60. So they are floating midway between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. Might be a tad towards their 52-week high there. 
Average volume, 377,000. Today was 187,000. You can see that there was a bit of a sell-off today. Looks like they started out pretty good day, ran up midday, and then had a sell-off uh, latter part of the day, rebounded maybe around 3 o'clock, uh, but overall down on the day slightly. Market cap was $7.912 billion, a bet of 1.16, so they are more volatile than the Toronto stock market. They do not have a price-to-earnings ratio, which leads me to believe it's negative. Earnings per share EPS is negative at one, negative 1.59. Earnings date expected was or is February 22nd coming up here next month for dividend $1.45. This is a monthly payer, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when I looked at the dividend payouts. I believe this is a monthly payer similar to realty income. So maybe this is the Canadian version of, of realty income with a nice starting dividend yield of 3.1%. X dividend date was yesterday. So you, if you were to buy them now, you wouldn't get the next dividend. You would have to wait. Looks like they're going to pay out on February 15th, so you would have to wait until after that February 15th one. Uh, one-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, $55.87. So they see some upside in the price appreciation here uh, for the stock price. Now, let's jump into the statistics, look at dividend yield theory. To do that, we're going to go down to dividends and splits. We're going to look at their five-year dividend yield average, 2.81%. We compare it to its current 3.1 over here, forward annual 3.1, same number. And since it is higher than their five-year average, that speaks to some undervaluation on this one, at least according to dividend yield theory. Again, we don't pay attention to payout ratios. You want to look at funds from operation for this one, make sure their funds from operation covers their dividend. Uh, but for their payout ratio, it does look like 166.01%. And very similarly, if you were to go look at realty income, it would be over well over 100%. REITs are oftentimes over 100%. It's just the nature of the way they do their business. They're always taking on uh, new investors, so money coming in that way. They sometimes issue stock uh, to raise capital for new investments. They're always making acquisitions. So they have to raise capital to buy more acquisitions to pay you more money to raise cap to re then raise capital to buy more properties to pay you more that's just the cycle of REITs in general some people don't like them because of that but it's your way in the door uh, to buying real estate or investing in real estate if you're interested in that REITs are a way to do that financials a lot of good information here you're going to see their balance sheet their income statement their debt to equity ratios assets over liabilities are their margins growing is their revenue growing are they paying down debt for our purposes we're going to look at free cash flow because we want Growing free cash flow over time, dividends are paid out of free cash flow, and typically if a company has growing free cash flow, they have growing dividends. Looking back, uh, December 2020, 236 million, 2021, 252 million, 2022, 261 million. Nice steady growth. Are we starting to repurchase some shares in 2022? Oh, <coughs> oh excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And it looks like so far in 2023, 287 million, and they're still repurchasing their own shares. So nice, steady dividend growth. And then recently, at least in the last couple of years, they've started repurchasing some of their own shares. So I do like that, and I like the steady dividend growth, or free cash flow growth, I mean. Well, hopefully it's steady dividend growth to match the free cash flow growth. <laughs> So one of them that didn't come up, they did not have a forecast on stackanalysis.com. And I always recommend more than one source. Another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. You use any sources that you like. Just make sure you're not just blindly following and trusting one. Make sure you're using at least two, if not three or four, to make sure the information you are getting is one, accurate, and two, up to date. So we're going to jump over to how efficiently is this company reinvesting on itself? Again, not a great metric. Really, for REITs, you want to look at funds from operations and then dig into their capital uh, their dollars. How are they? How are they reinvesting the dollars? Again, if they recently made a big acquisition uh, and they haven't started receiving any funds back from that acquisition, it could really hurt return on equity and return on invested capital. And REITs typically are again constantly buying new properties, so they might dump you know billions, millions, or billions of dollars into a property, and it looks like oh gosh, they've really spent a lot of uh, their finances, their equity, or their capital on these new properties and not receive the dime back in rents. Uh, so it's really gonna hurt these numbers. Overall, these are not bad numbers. Return on equity sitting at negative 2.85%. I usually like 10% or better, but again, not a good metric for REITs. Return on invested capital, not applicable. I'm assuming that's in the negative. They're showing their return on assets as negative 1.57% overall. So I'm assuming that's negative. And it also did not estimate anything for earnings per share growth over the next five year or revenue growth 
Overall, I would do more of a deep dive if you're interested in this, and this would not be a company I am interested in because I don't buy anything on the Toronto stock market. So for those of you who may be some of my Canadian viewers, let me know what you think about this one. You probably have more insights in this company. Maybe you rent or live in one of their properties. What do you think of them overall? Let's jump over and look at the dividend payouts. Again, they are monthly, so it looks like uh, they pay out you know, around the 29th, 27th, 30th, latter part of the month. Uh, Canadian terms, they're paying 0.12, you know, 12, basically 12 cents Canadian, and it does not look like it's growing over time. So payout ratio, again, we saw, you know, I'm not worried about that, but they do not have any dividend growth. So I don't really like that. I would like to see some dividend growth. But if you're looking for a monthly payer, this one is in that category. So it's a REIT that pays monthly. Maybe you're looking for some monthly income to help pay your bills. Again, if you're one of my Canadian viewers, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section down below. And that is it. Again, I really apologize if I'm butchering your name or if that is not your name. Sorry. Gyogo in NYC. Do you live in NYC or do you just like New York City or is that not NYC? Is that part of your name? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully that was what you're looking for. Apologies. They just did not have a lot of the numbers on this one because it is out of the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, and a lot of everything I look at and everything I buy is out of the New York Stock Exchange. Even foreign companies, whenever I buy them, they're still listed on the New York Stock Exchange and I buy the, the American tickers of those companies. Well, as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. It only costs a second. It doesn't cost you a dime, just your time. I really would appreciate it. Join us here on this journey to financial freedom. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell down below and drop a comment. Let me know what you think of this company. If you are one of my Canadian viewers, is it one you're familiar with? Do you know of anyone that rents any of their properties or do you live any of them? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. Like this one, this one was a suggestion. So if you have a company you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for, I hope, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great week, and we will see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in an investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk of gains money. Never invest any amount of comfortable losing it. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select your criteria. Or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.